young lady was standing on her feet, and the umpire said, young lady, take your base. And she went to first base after being hit by that pitch. I learned after the game that she looked up at the trainer, and she said, am I bleeding? And the trainer looked down and said, no. And the young lady looked up and said, I'm good, let's play ball. And this young lady is used to sitting behind the plate, catching 65 mile an hour fastballs. The most protected player on the field. Oh, by the way, she now has a mask on her batting helmet to help prevent that same thing from happening. And so as I think about that situation and how she should have been protected and how she is protected as a catcher, it reminds me of how life is for us as we run the race as a Christian, as we're in that war as soldiers of the cross. Very simply what Paul tells us here in these verses is really three things. Number one, he says that we must prepare for what we are about to undertake. Verses 10 down through verse 13, it reminds us as he begins where he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Let us remember where does our strength as we live life as a Christian, where does it come from? Doesn't our strength come from God himself? And just like that player, just like any player, what do they do? They draw on the knowledge of a coach. Maybe they draw on the knowledge of their parents, which is not always a good thing because sometimes parents think they know more than a coach does. That's why I don't coach, because I don't have to tell a parent. My job is to coach, your job is to cheer your team on, and if you can't do that, your car is over there and you can go sit in. <laughs> yes, I would say that. I told that to a parent one time when I was on fire. She never said another word the rest of the game. Never said a word the rest of the game. Because I could allow that parent affect my mentality of how I call balls and strikes. You worry about making your child, let the coach make your child and prepare them to be the best that they can be. Listening to what they have. Some coaches, not all, have a great knowledge of what they're trying to teach a player. You see, what happens in the Christian race as a soldier, this war ring, what happens if we start to begin to rely on our own strength? What will happen to us if we rely on our own strength? Brother, we can fail. When I begin to think I know things better than God, I'm going to fail. But secondly, under that part about being prepared for the, what we're going to undertake, you and I need to be dressed for success. <coughs> Paul tells us we need to put on the whole armor of God as we face the opponent. And we need to understand why do we need to wear this protective gear? Why do we need to put on the armor? The answer is given at the end of verse 11. We put it on so that we can be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks, the curveballs, and all of those deceitful tactics that Satan will use against us to draw us away from Christ. We put on that armor. Brethren, I want you to understand something. That is not a maybe. That is a promise from God. We've been studying in our Bible class from the book of Genesis. And even this morning, in our study from chapter 46, where Jacob is going to go down into Egypt, 
And he has that vision. What does the scripture say? If there's anybody who was here, remember what the passage said? God tells Jacob, I will be with you when you go down into Egypt. It is just like God has made a promise to us. He will always be with us. He will never leave or forsake. You know, another part of preparation is, is know who your opponent is. Now, I, I had to talk to Casey over here. It's the first time I've seen Casey in, in, in services since she went away to college, I think. All those years ago, I may have seen her once or twice. She played college softball at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. If I were to have asked her, about scouting your opponent. Did you have a scouting report? Yeah. Did you need a scouting report to know what every pitcher was going to do and what pitch she was going to throw you? Because trust me, the opponent, the coach of the opposing team knew your weakness <coughs> as a batter. They knew whether you were going to swing at that pitch that was six inches off of the plate or you were going to protect yourself as you swung at that high meter. Opponents are important to know who they are. We need to be able to have that scouting report. Well, guess what? We're fortunate because we have a scouting report right here. In this book, the Word of God, we have all that we need to know about our opponent. Would you agree? We have everything we need. And, 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 and I only have my New Testament with me. But if you go back and you think about the Old Testament, do you remember why the Old Testament was written? The Scripture says that the things that were written before time were written what? For our learning. The things written before time is the scouting report that will help us prepare for what we face today. You see, as one who observes softball and baseball on a regular basis, I even began to learn tendencies of players. Now, Coach Humphrey accused me the other day of giving away the secret to beating the Lady Lions. And I did say how a team defeated them and gave them their first loss of the season. I did mention that in the broadcast. But then I looked at him and said, Coach, I said, every game you play is on a live stream. Every one of the games you play is archived. So do you think a coach that you're going to face in the future hasn't gone back and watched that film of how you lost game one. And he just looked at me and he said, well, yeah. I'm trying to give away any secrets. There are no secrets when it comes to battling the devil. If we are prepared, the battle we have is a battle that is a fierce battle. Day in and day out. And so you and I are told how to dress ourselves, and when we dress ourselves with the whole armor of God, we can understand what it will do for us. Point number two this morning is actually getting dressed to participate. I mentioned earlier that the catcher in a baseball or softball game is the most heavily Dress the most well prepared to fight off all of those things. She's protected or he's protected. I've even seen catchers, even in full protection, take a injury where the ball comes off the bat about this. It hits that glove and jams the finger. Or maybe it hits them in the shoulder. They're protected. But if that ball gets over on the arm, they're not protected. So if they're the best prepared, the most protected player on the field, how can you, how can I, how can we be the best dressed and best prepared? Well, let's just look at verse 14 down to verse 8. And I'm not going to dwell a long time on each of these. But notice, first of all, it says we must put on the belt of truth. What is the belt of truth? You remember the word 
words of Jesus in John chapter 8 and verse 32, when he says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. This belt we put on, let us put the belt of truth on. Knowing the truth is the centerpiece of our heart. Without the belt, we will not be protected. Without the truth, we will be ill-equipped to face what the Satan throws at us. But secondly, Paul, the Apostle Paul says that we must wear the breastplate of righteousness. That is the chest protection. Now back in those days when I played baseball, I don't know, hard to believe. But when I was playing baseball, when you were on the pitcher's mound, you were fully exposed. You know, in little league baseball now, most leagues require the pitcher. Guess what they have to wear? They have to wear a chest protection. You know what? One incident of a young man getting hit with a line drive where he lost his life. The vital organs were not protected. I want you to imagine that you're sitting behind home plate. And I use softball, but 60 mile an hour fastball. How would you like to catch a major league baseball player? Oh, what well, 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 way would it? I got the perfect one. How would you like to be the catcher? For a player that plays for a lot of your all's favorite team, you know that orange team? You know, the balls, y'all ever heard of the Tennessee Volunteers? Number one ranked baseball team in, in the NCAA right now. They've got a kid on their team, Kenny, that can throw the ball 104 miles per hour. I try to come back there catching that fastball. How much extra padding would you put in that glove to catch a 104 mile an hour fastball? What if you missed it and it hit you in the chest? And you were unprotected. What happens when Satan hurls a fastball at you and you're unprotected? You see that comparison? There's danger in not wearing the right protection. But how about our feet? The Bible says and Paul says that our feet are to be protected by the gospel of peace and extension of the truth. Every catcher I know, they have to put those shin guards on. And the bottom of the shin guard, I'm going to have to get my foot up here high enough to show it to you. But on the top of their foot, there's a piece that comes off the bottom of the shin guard four to six inches long. You know what that's for? That's to protect the top of your foot. How many of you have ever had a broken foot? Uh, not an ankle, but you've broken the bones in your foot. Catching no proper gear can lead to a lot of broken Someone describes the gospel of peace as the sandals of the gospel. Also to be the shoes that you wear to take the gospel into the whole world. It is a sign that you are ready to go to battle. Then there is the shield of faith. The shield of faith we know is for the express purpose of extinguishing the darts, the fire darts that Satan will throw at you. These darts that Satan throws, they come in many forms. They come in the form of trying to get us to question our salvation. They come in the form to question whether we are worthy of the sacrifice of Christ. They come in the form of questions in our ability to serve.
they come in the form of discouragement. In the form to depress us. And in the form to say you're good. Brethren, I know that we here understand that no matter what Satan throws, no matter what he throws at us, and we defend it off with that shield, and we can defend ourselves with the shield as we pray. I don't think I have to ask this question, but I guess I will. Just, just for a refresher. How many of you do not believe in the power of prayer? How many of us that are here this morning do not believe in the power of prayer? You know what? I don't see any hands over. Why, why, why do you believe in the power of prayer? Why do you believe in the power of prayer? You want to know why I believe in the power of prayer? Because I've seen prayer answered. I have seen prayer answered among those of you who are sitting here today. How about wearing a helmet of salvation? mentioned the catcher a while ago, Batty. In high school softball, every player that bats is required to wear a face mask. When you move to the college game, you have a choice whether to wear a face mask or not. This young lady did not have a face mask on her batting helmet that day when the day began. The very next time she came to bat in the first in the second game of the day, guess what she had on her helmet? That was installed between the games. She was uncomfortable. She was uncomfortable with the mask that day. Slowly but surely, as the weekend progressed, she became more comfortable and she started hitting the ball again like she did before she ever got hit in the face. So sometimes you've got to adjust to the equipment if you're not used to wearing it. You see, what the helmet does, it protects our mind. It protects our head. It, the helmet of salvation helps protect us from the thoughts that the world throws at us. And the last thing that's mentioned in the reading he says that we must take up the sword of the Spirit. Of all of the armor of God, this is the only weapon we have to fight with. All the others are for defense. The Word of God is our sword. Yes, that sword can be used offensively and defensively. Kay and I, well, let me start first by saying I introduced my wife to this show. I didn't think she'd like it. It's called Forged in Fire. You all know, if anybody ever watched Forged in Fire, it is a reality show which actually takes four men who are blacksmiths and they've got three judges who are former bladesmiths. They make all kinds of crazy weapons. They start with a block of steel or in the show that we watched the other night, they had a car, Carl, that had been put in a crusher. And they had to go into that car and they had to salvage steel to make a weapon. And at the end, two of them face off where they have four days to make some type of sword, generally. And at their 
describing these short swords, they show how it's used in the offensive way and in the defensive way. Kay actually likes that show. And I think she likes that show because I always remind her that forging is dangerous. Do not do this at all. And I ask her every time, I said, can I get one of those? I can't have a forge. I can't buy the tools to do that. But brethren, the weapon is formed and fashioned so that we can use it to defend and to be on the offensive when we are back. <clears throat> Number three. I want you to look at the end of verse 18. You and I
going to go pay my fire insurance. I'm going to gather around the Lord's table. I'm not sure if gathering around the Lord's table with the attitude of, of I'm just doing what I think I need to do. I'm not sure if gathering around the Lord's table is, is helping me. But brethren, are you prepared for the battle? When you walk out those doors this morning, the battle begins. The battle is ever upon us. Just as baseball season brings us individuals who are prepared to play the game, the Bible prepares us.